Good morning everyone, as if Monday mornings weren't already bad enough, yours has just got worse, because God does not hear, so I'm afraid you're stuck with me today. West Ham United have got less than two weeks preparation to go, we take on Man City in 13 days time, the Premier League season is getting closer, the Championship season gets underway this weekend coming, football is back, thank God. I have to confess, when the season finished I thought, oh I could do with this break. And then I started to miss it, and it's getting a lot closer. I'm thinking, heck, did we even have a break? It feels like it's come round really, really quickly. But anyway, just one friendly left for West Ham United as we go to France on Saturday. I'm sure we'll get a bit more of an intense West Ham in that friendly. But in today's video, we're going to take a look back at the friendlies that have already occurred. I'm going to be discussing my positive observations. There's a few. Some of my negative observations. There's a few of them. There's a whole lot of everything in between as well the meaningless we're, we're not going to discuss that the stuff that stands out for good or for bad that's what we're going to have a little bit of a chat today and let's start with a positive shall we and that is the czech boys thomas suchek and vladimir sufal because i have been impressed by both i think they've been two of my sort of three impressive performers of free season if that makes sense but let's start with sufal anyway obviously these two players had the extended break because of the international period in the Nations League at the end of the season. So I had to wait to see them, didn't we? Now, Sufal, I thought, had a poor season last season. Obviously, he needed surgery, so that his injury could have played a part. Now, I must confess, whenever I hear that a player's played badly because he needed surgery, I don't necessarily always believe that. I think it might have been a contributing factor, but I don't always believe it's sort of like a magic wand. Well, he's had his surgery now. He's going to be go back to how he played the season prior. But in Safal's case, the signs are encouraging that that is exactly what's going to happen. When he came back in the pre-season, I noticed a massive difference straight away from Sufal compared to any of the fullbacks of the team. I thought he looked sharp. He's doing this traditional thing where he just hugs that touchline on the right-hand side. Whenever, it doesn't matter where the ball is on the pitch, he's on that touchline stretch in the game. I think he gets forward really well. Sometimes his crossing is a little bit hit in hope. I think he just controls it and swings it in rather than actually aiming for somebody but I don't mind that because it's up to the striker to then realise that that is exactly what Sufal is going to do so when Sufal gets the ball get in that box because you know it's going to be coming in but I feel that when Sufal is not on the pitch in pre-season there's a big big difference and not a good one I feel like our creativity going forward drops a little bit our how efficient we are going forward drops a little bit that attacking power that we have from the right back is not quite as good compared to when Sufal's on the pitch. So I've been really, really encouraged by what I've seen from him. And I'm looking forward to seeing him hopefully getting back to his best actually because on his day he is an attacking option from right back when he gets forward. We've seen it in his first season here and um, I'm looking forward to a little bit more of that actually from Sufal. So I'm quite hopeful that perhaps, just perhaps, the surgery has almost sorted him out once and for all. Now his teammate, Thomas Suchek, another positive player. Came on last Tuesday against Rangers. I thought we looked better when he was on the pitch. Now, that is obviously helped because we took off Declan Rice and Lanzini. And I don't think that was working against Rangers. I think they were cutting us right apart. I think it started with sort of lack of protection from the front three, with especially down Rangers' right-hand side with James Tavener, which was up against Say Ben Ram and Pablo Fanales. Lanzini was just missing from centre midfield. You could see how frustrated Declan Rice was. But anyway, Moyes withdrew them and he threw on three centre midfielders in one goal with Suchek, Coventry and Flynn Downs. So when you add an extra centre midfielder onto the pitch, you're probably going to get a little bit better in that area anyway. And I felt we did. But I felt Suchek was probably the brighter player out of the three of them. I thought he was getting on the ball really well. He was moving the ball really well. He was travelling with it at his feet. And this is... I am... I'm aware I'm quite critical of Suchek when he's in possession of the ball. I don't think there's any creativity from him. And I stand by that. And he wasn't necessarily doing that against Rangers, but just felt like you could tell he had a bit of a rest. And that continued again on Saturday. Two goals now. Now, the first one, incredibly scrappy. But that doesn't matter. The ball went in the back of the net at the end of the day. However, on Saturday, really good finish against Luton. Fantastic header. Good to see him getting into that box. And I felt he had another good game against Luton. First half, I thought, was much better than the second one from Suchek. I don't think he got his forward anywhere near as much as he did until he was withdrawn in the second half against Luton. Why that was, I don't know. 
but especially the first 45 again it was like he just continued his performance from Ibrox. He was getting on the ball. He was moving it well. He looked energetic. He looked fresh. And this is the Suchek we need coming up this season. I'll be interested to see what our tactics are going forward with Mark Warburton now at the club as well. You know, Moyes last season admitted that Suchek wasn't playing as well. Moyes even admitted that it could be down to Declan Weiss's new role. So I expect... Moyes has sort of acknowledged there was a problem with Thomas Suchek on more than one occasion last season. So I expect to see a solution. You know, there was rumours earlier on in the summer that that solution would be to sell Thomas Suchek. That's not happened. It's looking less and less likely that anyone's going to match the valuation. And I still don't want him sold. I want us to see... I want to see West Ham get the best out of Suchek going forward. Now, part of me still wants to see that three in centre midfield with Flynn Downs behind Thomas Suchek and Declan Weiss so they can actually both go forward rather than just one of them. We haven't seen that in pre-season and that's probably, well, it's, it's a bit of a negative really, but that's not something I've seen. I'm talking about stuff I have seen. That's more something I've not seen that I would have liked to have done. And so I've sort of given up on the hope that we're going to see a bit of a 4-3-3 against Man City and I expect Rice and Suchek in there. I think Suchek's performances have been pretty encouraging in the summer, actually. So the Czech boys are a massive plus for me. And it's my biggest positive of the summer so far. Now let's swing round to negative, shall we? Let's bring the tone down for Monday morning. And I'm just going to put it out there. Lack of creativity. It's not just Luton. It was Rangers as well. It was Reading as well. And it's a little bit stale. And I know people will say, but it's only pre-season, you can't read too much into it. I say that a lot of the stuff. I say that a lot of the time. If somebody said, oh, well, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a, a good example here. Someone said, oh, Alan Creswell's performances haven't been great or whatever. I'll say, but it's only pre-season. Let's just see what he's like when the Premier League comes round. But the lack of creativity, I felt like that was something we had the second half of last season. Quite a large period, I felt, in open play... We were just a bit stale that the attacking midfielders weren't really creating much. Jared Bowen aside, obviously. Our most creative player last season, statistically, was Mikel Antonio. Now, I don't necessarily have an issue with that, as long as the attacking midfielders are then scoring goals. Now, Jared Bowen obviously is. Jared Bowen was utilising the space that Antonio would leave for Bowen to move into. He's probably the only one that was doing it. Lanzini wasn't doing it. Fornals wasn't doing it. Saeed Ben Rama, while his his goals and assists were decent for him, he wasn't. It wasn't coming at a result of the movement from Antonio. If that makes sense. So I think the lack of creativity is a bit concerning for me so far this preseason. You know that goal against Reading had about I don't know fifty passes, and it was like wow, that was nice to watch. But that's it. There's not really been much after that against. Luton Town, the most recent friendly, the only chance I can remember being created via open play that wasn't a cross was Lanzini's back heel for Antonio. You know, Antonio had a one-on-one, -on -one, but that came from a mix-up in Luton's defence. And I'm just watching these attacking fielders, in particular Ben Ram and Finals, I'm just not quite seeing enough to encourage me that we're in for a really good season from either of them. You know, myself and Gondor have been doing reviews of the friendlies throughout the summer. And Finals is the one player we disagree on. We're generally in agreement with most players. But Finals, Gonzo thinks he's playing well. He's been quite impressed by Finals. Whereas myself, I've been quite unimpressed, if I'm honest with you. Now, both of them will have important roles next season at West Ham. I'm not saying sell them or anything like that. I'd have just liked to have seen a little bit more encouragement to suggest that these two are going to up their game next season. Because I feel like they both need to. I feel like Antonio needs more chances given to him from the attacking midfielders, like I said, bowing aside, obviously. Whether we sign Skimaka or not, it doesn't really matter. The man up front needs chances, and we haven't really created much pre-season. And it's a bit of a concern for me, actually, because while, like I said, I will say it's only pre-season for a lot of things, however, if I'm seeing stuff last season that's continuing into pre-season, I can't dismiss it. I find it difficult. So lack of creativity is probably my biggest concern going by friendly is it concern is how i will label it it's not i'm not having sleepless nights of panicking about it i'm more worried about aguero's injury than lack of creativity to some extent but i'm certainly concerned about what i'm seeing or should i say what i'm not seeing 
from West Ham in the final list thus far. Anyway, that's a big positive and big negative. Shall we get back to a minor positive, a lesser positive? And that is Nikola Vlasic. Now, he's not... He's not turned into Messi. He's not turned into Jared Bowen, right? Now, I must confess, I was a bit disappointed by Vlasic earlier on in the summer. Um... Because the international players got an extended break. And so Vlasic was obviously entitled to his because he was away with Croatia for the Nations League. And he took his, his extended break as he's entitled to. But there's a little bit of me a little bit disappointed because obviously Conor Coventry was entitled to one as well because he was away with Ireland under 21s. And Conor Coventry said, no, I don't want that extended break. I'm going to take my week or two that I've got left. And then I'm going to come back with the rest of them. So when... Those not involved in international breaks, like Creswell and Antonio Rock up for training, I'm going to be there as well. And he was. Connor Coventry cut his holiday short, came back to impress David Moyes. I'd have just liked to have seen a little bit of that with Vlasic, because I felt he needs to. I feel like he needs to. I think, you know, the other ones, Rice and Bowen, Suchek, Suva, they almost don't need to impress David Moyes. Moyes knows what you can get from them. Moyes trusts those players. With Vlasic... I would argue we've seen more examples that Moyes doesn't trust Nicola because Stamford Bridge is the biggest example away to Chelsea last season. Moyes rotated pretty heavily with the Europa League and Vlasic still didn't start and he still didn't even get on off the bench and that was worrying. We Moyes is opting for Andrei Yarmolenko ahead of Nikola Vlasic towards the end of last season. So I just felt that Vlasic has a little bit of something to give to the manager. But saying that, his performances have been impressive for me. Now, he's not getting 10 out of 10s or anything like that. It's sixes and sevens, maybe an eight. But he's looking sharp. He's looking better this preseason. Really good goal against Reading as well. That header is underrated to some extent. Um, I've got one or two concerns with him in preseason. I think he doddles on the ball a bit too much. He gets tackled a little bit too often. However, there's more of encouraging signs from him than probably any of the other attacking fielders. Jared Bowen aside. Let's just ignore Jared Bowen, okay? He's special. He's too good. Let's just put him to one side. But Vlasic is looking quite bright, actually. And has he played himself into contention for the Man City game? Probably not. He would probably have to start in France on Saturday and perform man and match style performance in order to maybe start against Man City. But I want to see him start on Saturday. I was disappointed he didn't get the, the green light from um, the beginning against Luton because I felt he could have done with an hour on his, under his belt because against Rangers he didn't start that game. So I thought, let's flip it round and let's start him. But we didn't. I'm hoping he starts this weekend coming and he gets a good hour to show David Moyes, to try and impress David Moyes. In that number 10 role as well. I think that's important. He looks better centrally. You know, against Luton, first half, I was we were just we didn't create anything. Bowen was striker and he was coming into midfield to get the ball. Vlasic came on, got the ball on his left foot, half a chance at best, bang, good effort, good save. On another day, it lands at Antonio's foot and he puts it to the back of the net. Good from Vlasic. I was I was happy with Vlasic in ten minutes and what I saw in the first forty five from Ben Ramon for now. Anyway. Let's swing back to a negative. Ben Johnson. It's, he's struggling a bit, isn't he? It's it's the whole going forward thing. Listen, defensively, Ben Johnson defensively in preseason, nothing to worry about. He's been strong, he's been fine, he's been really good. Nothing to worry about whatsoever. Let me make that clear. The negative conception in regards to Ben Johnson's preseason is that final third part of his game, which Last season, when he would play full-back, some games he would, he would just come on, he would do the review or whatever, and he would discuss how Ben Johnson's crossing wasn't great, his decision-making wasn't great in the final third. He just sort of hesitates a little bit. He gets into good positions. I think that's the most frustrating part for me because he actually reads the game really well, gets into the final third, has a bit of space, gets the ball, and then it's like watching something in slow motion. And by the time he goes to do something, the chance is gone. The prime example was against Rangers, he played on the right against that game, now I'll jump back to the Reading one in a minute, but against Rangers he started right back after a poor performance at left back against Reading, went forward, Ben Ram a lovely ball across, Bowen sort of ran over the top of the ball so could collect to Ben Johnson, he made his way into the box, Antonio was in the box, 
Ben Johnson had it, loads of time, loads of space. I go on then, Ben, get the make a good cross. We've got a chance. He took a really heavy first touch, rolled away from him. He ran after it. Bad sitch Rangers left back and sliding in. Great tackle, ricocheted off Ben Johnson out for a goal kick. And it's one of them you're just oh, you know we need to see something. And the Saturday prior when we played Reading, he was left back and again. His positioning was brilliant. He was timing those runs down that left-hand channel. Fantastic. Got forward really well. Was pushing side Ben Rama in field, which was good. It was helping Ben Rama's game as well. But we kept giving the ball to Johnson. And he was stopping the ball dead, cutting back. And he was having to play it back up the line to a centre-back or whatever. And any attack, any momentum we had, and when it ended with Johnson, it just got killed dead. And it's frustrating because he's a good player. Like I said, defensively, Fine, all summer, fine, not an issue. It's just going forward, it's frustrating. And it's one of them, if you had that magic wand that we spoke about earlier, if you could give Ben Johnson the confidence of Soufal for crossing and the ability of Aaron Creswell for crossing, you've got the perfect modern fullback there. But he doesn't have either. And it's it's a bit frustrating. You know it's a big difference when between Johnson and Soufal at right back. That's all I'm going to say. And that's not a good thing. Now, back to something positive, shall we? Let's pick it up again. Right, I'm going to throw in the youngsters. Now, in summers gone by, we've actually probably seen more minutes handed out to the youngsters at West Ham. And usually they're quite meaningless. You know, they'll play quite a few games and you sit there and you watch it and you think, but they're not going to be involved. They're not going to be involved. Right enough, they're not. But there's only two youngsters that's really been sort of ever stays in David Moyes' pre-season squads. Now, the first one's Harrison Ashby. And the positive here is Moyes has spoken about Ashby in the past, about him being closest being, to being ready for the Premier League out of the under-23s players. In the last week or so, Moyes had to sort of cut his first-team squad down because, obviously, we played Bournemouth and Ipswich at the same time, so we needed two squads. We needed a big squad. The game before that, when we played in, we played in uh, Geneva against Servette, we didn't have the international players, so Moyes needed to use the youngsters. Well, he's not needed them from the Reading game onwards. So, the likes of Chesters and Ocoflex and Equa, players we wouldn't have minded seeing, let's be honest, Longello. Moyes has basically said to them, I, I don't need to, you're not in my first team plans. Go back to the under 21s and go play pre season with the under 21s. However, Harrison Ashby, and there's one other, we'll get onto him in a second. Harrison Ashby he said, No, you're not going to the under 21s. You're staying in the first team. So I think Harrison Ashby is essentially being promoted to a first team player. Of course, he'll probably feature for the under-21s going forward next season if he's not getting game time for the senior squad. But I think he's probably like what Ben Johnson was maybe 18 months ago, which is just on the brink of first team and under-23s. Performance-wise, he's been fine. He was obviously missing for the Rangers game for whatever reason, which would have been a good opportunity for him to get minutes under his belt. Came on against Luton at left back. Didn't really make too much of an impression. Good nor bad though. Because you can't make a bad impression. He didn't do that. Wasn't necessarily a good one either. But certainly earlier on in pre-season. It was promising from what we saw from Ashby. Very confident. Got forward really well. Wasn't scared to take his man on. Put that cross in. And I'm looking forward to it actually. And what I will say. And I think some people will agree. And some people will disagree with this. Let's just say hypothetically. We were playing Nottingham Forest, second game of the season. It's nil nil. There's 20 minutes to go. Sufal's injured, or Sufal's not playing very good. And you've got Johnson and Ashby on the bench. Hypothetical question: Who do you bring on? And I think a lot of people would say Harrison Ashby because you're looking for that offering in the final third. Obviously, we we're two nil up. You're saying Ben Johnson get the better defender on here, but certainly going forward, Ashby's looking good. Now, the other positive, obviously, is Mubama. Really, 17-year-old striker. Now, let's be clear. Let's be honest here. He probably wouldn't be involved at all if we'd already signed a striker a month ago. If Skamaka or Broya had arrived a month ago, Mubama's minutes would probably be extremely limited, and I don't think he'd be in the squad currently. So he's only there through lack of squad depth. Antonio striker, and that's it. But he's taken advantage of that. You know, I think he's looked quite promising. Now, I don't think we'll see him this season. I don't think we'll see him play a minute for West Ham this season. Perhaps if we get a lower league team in the League Cup or we've 
qualify for the Europa Conference League group stage and we have it wrapped up with a game to spare like we did in the Europa League last season, then we might see him. That is it. However, that doesn't have to be seen as a bad thing. I think the experience he will have gained this summer is incredible for a 17-year-old. He looks relatively promising when he's on the pitch. He's a real tall lad. His pressing game is fantastic. He's really enthusiastic. In regards to sort of his build-up play, his hold-up play, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a little bit green. It's a little bit rough. But he's allowed to be nervous. He's allowed to have struggle a little bit adapting to the first team because he's gone from playing in the under-18s, not the under-23s, under-18s last season, to playing alongside the likes of Jared Bowen. It's gonna, he's, it's possibly going to be a bit overwhelming for him. But the experience he's gained just by being in and around the first team all summer will be massive. And I would expect Moyes perhaps is going to promote him to the under-21s next season, test him against older, more experienced and probably better centre-backs in the league next year at that age level to get him ready. But at 17, he looks he looks good. Um, like I said, I don't think we'll see him at all for the first team this season. But I'm looking forward to seeing his progress and development at the younger age groups at West Ham, actually. I've been quite encouraged by him. And I, I don't mind admitting, I hadn't heard of him before this summer. I, I don't watch West Ham under-18s. Um, more fool me by the looks of it. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing more of Mubama later on this season, regardless of what side it's for. Now, two more negative things. And there's no way there's a, a couple of positives as well. Um, more negativity, though. Right, what we got? Antonio one-on-ones. He's missing them, isn't he? I think his all-round game is quite good. I think open play, I think his movement's good. His hold-up play is good. Against Rangers in the first half, he's pulling out left a lot, skinning the players down that side. But when he's in the box, it's not great, is it? I think pretty much every Fernley he's missed a one on one. And when I say a one on one, I don't mean the ball's dropped to him and he's had a shot. I mean, the ball's given to him at his feet and he's running on goal. You know, Ipswich, he somehow overran the ball and did nothing. Um, good save by the looting goalkeeper on Saturday. And if that was a one-off, if he'd scored the other one-on-ones all pre-season, he'd dismiss it, but he hasn't. He's missed them all. And this one's probably not much of a worry per se, but you want your striker to score goals in pre-season. You want him to get a little bit confident ahead of the Man City game. And all summer, I've been quite confident Antonio will start against Man City, regardless of what happens with Broya and now Gianluca Scamacca. Part of me still is, but there's also part of me thinking, I wonder if Skamaka's here. We're expecting him to be here by the middle of the week. If he starts in France, and if he does relatively well, Moyes has got a bit of a dilemma on his hand here. But his one-on-one -on -one missing is worrying. But like I said, his all-round play, I think he's looking okay, actually. Struggled against Reading. After about half an hour, he looked pooped. But Rangers and then Luton, I think he's looking quite sharp and, and in good nick, actually. Now, back to positives. I've just realised how long I've been speaking for. I'm really sorry. Get Gonzo back now. I'm going to run through these positives because there's one more negative. Uh, positives. David Moyes, I think, um, he, he was a bit pissed off after the Rangers game, wasn't he? I like that. I thought it was quite encouraging to hear your manager pissed off after a friendly because as fans, I think most of us were a bit worried by that performance. Clearly, Moyes was as well. So there's no no head in sand type stuff here from the manager because it's only friendly. He was annoyed after that one. And we've seen a bit of a reaction in the transfer market since then too, which is good. But the squad morale seems perfectly fine. Um, I know it's a little bit like when Gonzo searches people on YouTube that he doesn't know. The club only gives you stuff that the club want you to see for pre-season in regards to the, the sort of the training camp, if you like. But what we have seen, it's quite enjoyable. I quite like watching it. So with a smile on my face and you hear from from the players and you know, when Flynn Downs came in, he was speaking about how easy it was to settle in. You see that interview when Aguero arrived, he's speaking with Abona, he's speaking with Carlton Cole. I mean, this is a guy that's been here for literally a day and it looks like he's settling in already. That encourages me. I feel good. But another negative is the centre-backs. It's hard not to. Aguero injured. We'll wait and see for how long, but he's injured. Abona... I'm not going to lie, I thought he was okay. Um, when pre-season came back, I was expecting to have a new signing in the squad. The club are really having to manage his return, his rehab, which I understand. 
but I perhaps naively expected him to be ready to go by the start of the season. He's not ready. His minutes in pre-season have been very limited. He's been getting sort of special care in regards to warm up and warm downs, which, like I said, makes sense. It's a horrific injury he's overcoming. It's a long-term injury, but I just thought he'd be ready by now, and clearly he isn't. We've also got the D-up thing. Where was he at the weekend? Was he injured? That's a slight knock, but is it? Or is he, are we trying to sell him? Where has Craig Dawson disappeared to? Four pre-season friendlies he's missed now, so he's clearly got a bit of a knock as well. Kurt Zuma was our only fit, and I use that word very loosely, fit centre-back on Saturday, because by the end of it, he was hobbling badly. So it's nobody's fault. You know, we've got five senior centre-backs on our books. Unfortunately, three of them, well, two of them are definitely injured. One of them is not quite ready yet. The other one's hobbling around. The other one's disappeared. We don't know where he is with Diop. Where was he on Saturday? So the centre-backs is sort of a bit of cause for concern. Now, the last positive, I'm not really going to do it. I'm just going to say, um, so then we've got five positives in front of it. Uh, you know, let's be positive, right? The last positive I was just going to say was that um, Jared Bowen and Declan Rice look class. I know it's, it's just a bit of a, an easy one, but Bowen looks good. Bowen looks like the season's still going. When he came back at the start of pre-season, he was sharper than everyone else. It was some of the players' third friendly of the summer. Bowen's first. Bowen looked like he was better prepared than the other ones. I was really encouraged by that. Declan Rice. Now, I'm not, I actually thought he was all right against Luton. That's it. But I've seen Luton fans speaking about the game. And they were saying, seeing Declan Rice in person, they realised just how much class he oozes when he's on the pitch and stuff, which is always really encouraging. Rangers fans were saying the same on our review as well. They were talking about Declan Rice, how good he was and stuff. And it just gives you a bit of encouragement, really. So, anyway, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to shut up. Half an hour long video there. I'm really sorry. I thought this was going to be 50 minutes long. Um, but, yes, Gonzo will be back later on this week. Don't worry. And um, I'm going to disappear now. But if you've enjoyed this video, do drop a like on it. If you've made it this far, please do subscribe. Gonzo's close to 17,000 uh, subscribers on this channel. So, it would be really nice to hit that as well. And um, let me know your thoughts on the friendlies in the comments below. <laughs>